This lens produces some really interesting, beautiful images when used correctly. Check out these samples. All right, guys, as you saw right there from the photos and the video here, this Petzval 80.5 Mark II Bokeh Control Lens from Lomography have right here in my hand is a very special and unique lens. Now, it's not going to be for everybody out there. I get that. But if you're into character, if you're into something that looks different from the modern lenses out there, this is a lens that you may want to pick up. Now, it does come in two mounts. It comes in the F mount here and also EF mount. It does not come in any mirrorless mount to date thus far. It's been out for a few years already from Lomography, and it is tapping into the history of the Petzval lenses from the 19th century. Now, in case you guys do not know this, Joseph Petzval, who is a Hungarian mathematician, created the first portrait objective lens, which is the Petzval lens. At the time, it was 160 millimeters with an aperture at 3.6, which was really bright in those days. And it was made uh, with Voigtlander, actually, from 1842 or 1845 to about 1862, made about 60,000 pieces. Then other companies got involved in it. You know, obviously back in the day, it's very different than what it is today in terms of lenses and copyrights and all that kind of stuff. But uh, it was picked up by Lomography a few years back and they've been making this line of Petzval lenses and it's great. You know, they got a basic version of this where the bokeh control isn't as pronounced. You've got this one where it goes from level seven to level one. Then they have a 58 uh, millimeter version of this as well. The images are awesome. It's kind of cool and it's unique. And I know for some of my friends out there and some of you guys out there who love the apochromatic lenses, the spherical and all that crazy sharpness and perfect rendition, you may look at the images of this lens going, hmm, I don't know about this. But as I mentioned, if you're into character, you're into something unique, this lens will get people talking about your photography because it is so out there and so different. People go, what did you shoot that with? Because I actually did was doing an exhibition with a, a few friends of mine, capturing some images from the Tochu Opera, which you saw in the samples right there. And uh, one of these was on display and they kept asking me like, what did I shoot this with? That looks so unique. And it was a lady putting on her makeup and there was just all the swirls in the background and it's this lens right here and it just, stood out amongst the crowd. But let's talk about the construction on this. Now it is all metal construction. It's pretty well made. This lens hood that is on top of it does not come off from what I understand. It does have a lens cap on it, which is metal um, right here. There is no felt inside of it and it's not that sticky onto this. But again, I have a demo unit. This is not a retail version of the lens. Um, they just sent this to me with bubble wrapping. They said, here, just try it out because this goes back to Lomography, by the way. And uh, that's kind of the essence. I mean, it's got three different rings here. You got your bokeh control from uh, level seven to level one. And then you've got your aperture ring here. And then you've got your focus ring at the base of the lens, which is very interesting because I'm not used to that. And when I first was using this lens, it was a little bit like, why am I not getting the images I want? And then I realized I was turning the wrong rings. And because there is no clicks to the aperture ring on this, you don't know what you're turning because every ring feels almost exactly the same with the grooves and the, and the way that it's designed. So I mean, it would have been nice if they maybe would have kind of differentiated the feel of the ring so you kind of know by touch what exactly you're using. But uh, I guess it's just practice makes perfect with these kind of lenses. Now there is this interesting filter that they have and you've seen this probably by Lomography before where you can actually have different shapes like hearts and stars and different kind of shapes for your bouquet. They did not send those for me uh, to try, which is okay because I am not into that kind of stuff. To me, I want the lens to perform as it was designed to be without those interesting filters. And I love the bouquet as it is already. It's already crazy enough for me. So I don't need hearts and stars and all that kind of stuff. So I was fine without that. But outside of that though, it's been a joy to use. I will say uh, from my experience with the lens, just a little bit of a con, and they did tell me this is corrected on the retail version when you guys get this, is that when you do turn the bokeh control, sometimes the aperture ring does move along with it. I'm not 100%, but just sometimes it just move out of place. So if you're keeping it at f1.9, it might move to f2 or f3 or 4.5 or whatever it may be. You know, if it does happen, you let them know and I think they'll handle it, they'll take care of you in that regard. But this is a really nice lens and at 1.9 and 80.5, you're getting a very thin shallow depth of field to it and your bokeh is 
as you saw, absolutely friggin' amazing. And you're getting this lens for the bokeh. It is actually quite sharp in the center of this lens, which was surprising to me. I wasn't expecting that. With these kind of like vintage inspired lenses, you're expecting to be very soft, wide open. Then as you stop down, become sharper and sharper. It does get sharper and sharper, stop down, of course. But at 1.9, it is quite usable if you want to use this for more modern applications. Let's say you're shooting products and you want to get something that's sharp, wide open, you can get some pretty sharp images. There will be a little bit of chromatic aberration, of course. It's not fully corrected, but it is pretty usable, I have to say. You can go close focusing up to 0.8 meters, which is pretty good for this as well. Yeah, but again, if you're using that bokeh at level seven, good luck. Everything's gonna be swirly, which can be quite cool at some times. And if you wanna create some very artistic images and have the whole image completely out of focus, it can be a very interesting take on that. And I tried that with that one image at the Tochu Opera that I was photographing, and it looked quite cool to me. I mean, you may think it looks all out of place, but I just tried something different. I kind of liked the way that it was swirling and had its own unique character to it. But uh, the cons are is that it's an older design lens and it's not going to be for everybody out there. But if you don't want the crazy swirliness of the bokeh, then bring down, down to level one on the bokeh control and you got more of a kind of a standard 80 millimeter lens and it performs that way. But if you want that look, I just keep it at level seven and have some fun with it because that's what I've done and I've really enjoyed it. So anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on the Petsville 80.5 Mark II Bokeh Control Lens from Lomography. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Is this is the lens you're looking to pick up. I mean, it's been out for a few years already, but it's always nice to revisit these kind of old lenses out there and seeing if they have a place in our photography in 2023 and especially videography as well now. So with that, guys, like this video, subscribe to the channel, helps me out a lot, and I will chat to you very, very soon. Take care.